Rescuers are in a desperate race against time, but the going is not easy. Roads have been damaged or completely washed away, and there's no phone signal in many areas. Still, these rescuers have managed to rescue 10 people in the last four days. I'm traveling with them to May Village, one of the hardest hit areas. Now we are going in a very dangerous road that is deeply submerged in water. We are surrounded by ocean after ocean of flood water, dotted by trees. <laughs> Electric poles, I believe they are built for the dam, hydropower dam. And we also see many abandoned, collapsed houses. We don't see any local residents or any other human beings apart from our group in this area at the moment. As we got closer to the ground zero, there were many more military checkpoints. <coughs> And where the flood waters have receded, a picture of utter devastation. This man told me that his team recovered many bodies from the mud in front of us. And inside this house, rescue workers found a dead body. Red paint was used to indicate where the bodies were found. I saw seven such markings within just a 10 minutes walk. Here I can see how this family tried to survive an improvised barrier to block the flood, but the water was just too high. Rescue workers found one dead body in this house. Can you try and get inside to see what's the scene of the house? But it's hard to move in because this is the mud. That is mud. That the biggest, one of the biggest challenges that keep rescue workers from access to other areas where they really need access to, to help to find survivors. <coughs> Hope rose when sounds emerged from a nearby house. But it's the sound of mud falling through a selling hole from the upper floor. I also followed a rescue team to Thua Hien village, an area where no one has searched so far. For hours, rescuers were greeted with only an eerie silence and evidence of villagers who once lived here. Tungo, Channel News Asia, Sanam Sai.